before I get into this, let me go ahead and give you some important backstory. A good friend of mine and I were on the western coast of Florida hanging out, specifically the Gulf Coast. We were having a great time. We had found this great secluded spot right there along the shoreline where nobody else was, and were drinking, enjoying the sun. After all, it was a very warm day in April, so we're just sitting there, lost in whatever conversation we were having, when my friend looks over at the water because he hears something. He then turns his attention towards the water. I follow after, and we both see it. Suddenly, I saw the water churn and I heard a deep, guttural noise. I see this huge green creature with spines all over it shooting up out of the water. It had a long tail and a big head with a very wide mouth. This thing jets up out of the water, running right for us, like a man in a swamp monster costume. It was crazy. This thing was something you can't even imagine. It honestly kind of reminded me of the thing of the Black Lagoon, but much uglier. We don't even waste a second. My friend and I just turn around towards the Everglades and start running as hard as we can to outrun this thing. It catches up to us pretty quickly, just due to its immense speed. It was able to not only emerge from the water as quickly as it did, but it was running after us fast. I remember thinking to myself, what is that thing? And I'm running as fast as I can, and my friend is now right behind me. We're running through the thickest parts of the Everglades as fast as we can, hoping this thing cannot catch up to us. It's a pretty long area we were running through, and we were beginning to get tired. I could hear it breathing. Its breaths were loud and deep, and I knew we were not going to be able to outrun this thing forever. I could not force my legs to move faster than they were already going, and I knew that this thing was now following us into the Everglades. I turned around to see what this thing looked like, fully up close, and it was honestly the most terrifying sight. This horrible-looking creature, in much more vivid and unpleasant detail, let me just start off and say nothing about this thing looked nice. It was disgusting. Like a cross between toxic waste ooze, a murloc-looking thing, and some sort of amphibious frog mutation. This thing was about ten feet tall from what I could tell. It was huge. It had a long tail with black spines shooting on its back, and it had a large, wide-open mouth, lots of tiny, sharp teeth, tiny little teeth. It had weird little eyes on the top of its head, too, and it had two arms that were about three feet long each, very long, and it had these massive, strange, pincer-type hands. They were only a few fingers, I guess you could call it that, more like appendages. This thing was covered in slimy skin, or maybe scales. I couldn't really tell. It was moving in on us, and fast, and I could see that it was getting ready to attack. I didn't know what to do. I looked back at my friend as we're running, and he was just as frightened as I was. I hear this thing make a loud hissing sound, kind of like an insect does. And so here we are, stuck in the middle of the Everglades with this thing. It appeared as if it was going to attack. I just remember my friend and I looking at each other, and so we began throwing rocks at this thing, hoping we could at least stun it or knock it down. I threw one of the biggest rocks I could find at it, and it made a loud thud when it hit the creature right in the head. It didn't appear phased at all. In fact, it only started running directly at us more. We knew we were not going to be able to outrun this thing forever, so we just kept running into the Everglades. I remember being so tired, but I had to keep going. It was hot, and I was sweating. I was breathing so heavily, and I was just exhausted. Finally, 
we come upon a big tree that was just kind of standing out from the rest. It was right in the middle of a very small clearing. I could see that this tree was covered in a similar slimy substance that was on this creature. My friend and I, thinking quickly, veered off the path, literally diving and flying into a very small section of brush for cover. I could hear the creature running right toward us. It stopped by the tree and was looking around for us. Because we kind of cut a corner, it did not see that we both dove into this small brush and it could not find us. It was kind of letting off a low growl, kind of like cats do. I was looking up at it through the brush and I could just see how ugly this thing was. You know, it was really frightening and it kept looking for us, making these little clicking noises. It was angry that it could not find us. So my friend and I stayed quiet, stayed in our little section of brush, waiting for it to leave. After what seemed like an hour of waiting, we heard the creature's footsteps move away from us and start looking in different areas. It probably wasn't even an hour, but it sure felt like it. We sat and waited a bit longer to make sure we could not hear it anymore. Finally, we decided to get out of there. We just walked out to that section of brush and started walking in a different direction entirely. We had no idea where we were, and I remember being so scared. It was like the thing was going to start chasing us the moment it knew we were out in the open. I remember this being one of the scariest things that has ever happened to me. I wish I could have got a picture of it with my phone, but I didn't want to take a chance, so I just kept running out there in a different direction. As we're going in this different direction, we began to hear those weird clicking noises, the same ones that this was making, except all around us, as if there were more than one of them. I'm not sure if that explains why there was that strange substance of slime on that tree or what. After that, we decided to just call one of our other friends and have him pick us up. We didn't want to be in the Everglades alone with this thing, or possibly more of them out there. We were both so drained from running, and we just wanted to get back to our car. And after maybe an hour or so of walking out of the way, we eventually make it. Our friends were there waiting for us by the car, just to ensure that we were safe. We explained to them that somebody tried to chase us and hurt us. Of course, that wasn't truthful, but we knew they wouldn't have believed us had we told them this strange thing from the sea came out of the water and chased us on shore into the Everglades. My friend and I and our other friends went back to his house. That's all I kind of remember of that day. But I will never forget the thing I saw that day. I'm not sure if it was an alien or what, but I do know that when I got home, I looked it up and found out that there have been sightings of this creature in the Everglades, but reports are far and few in between. Some call him Crawfish Man. I have never seen anything like it, and I really don't know what it is. I have never been so scared in my life. This thing that was chasing us, it was like it was angry that we were in its territory or home. That's how I kind of internalized it. Either way, just be careful when you're at the beach that you don't piss off the wrong thing and end up in a horror science fiction movie like we did. Just to preface, I'm certain that me and my family witnessed a real-life, living, breathing plesiosaurus. However, I can't be 100% sure. I'll tell you my story and you can be the judge. Back in 2009, I was spoiled with my family vacation to Maui, where we got to go on a small private boat tour where we got to go whale watching. I don't know too much about sea life, but I can tell you, we did see whales that day. But I'm pretty sure we also saw something else that day that not only shocked all of us, but even the tour guide who has done a multitude of tours. This was going on in the early evening hours. There was still daylight, so we could see. 
but the thing that we saw in the evening time was definitely not a whale. It was something else entirely. So my family and I were looking out into the water when we see a large tail fin of a whale. We all got excited at the sight of it when the tour guide pointed in the water a little ways away and asked us, did you guys see that? What is that? We all looked and gasped at what we saw. As soon as that tail fin went underwater, we see another large shape moving in the water, closer to the boat. It looked like a flipping bulbous thing moving around. It was huge. It was easily the size of a small car, but you couldn't really see much details of it from the distance and how much it was above the water. This thing was much closer than the whale and was probably no more than 70 feet at most. Then, we see it lift its head up above the water, and for the first time, we could see much more details. Whatever animal this was had a very long neck and a small head, and as soon as it surfaced, it looked over in our direction and let out this long, drawn-out groan. At first, we all thought it was maybe a large sea serpent or something, but then the tour guide got excited and started telling us that it was indeed a baby humpback whale, and seeing as it was really close to shore, we were able to see its fins and tail. He says that it was a young calf that was coming to shore to feed. Look, the dude's an idiot. I'm sorry, but since when does a baby humpback whale look like a flipping dinosaur? Maybe he was just saying that to try and comfort other people of the boat, like maybe they didn't know. I know it was a long shot, but I was hoping someone in here, in this community, might know something about this. Personally, I wasn't scared. I thought it was like the coolest thing I ever saw, but my family and the tour guide seemed nervous. I know that I'm not the first person to witness this, and I'm sure I'm not the last. There have been many other plesiosaur sightings, and again, like I said, I can't be totally sure. I don't know what this was exactly. After it looked over at us, it quickly retracted its head back down into the water, along with its long neck, and then its large bulbous body disappeared underneath the surface. And that, my friends, was it. I'm really curious to know what this was. I mean, it really looked like a plesiosaur, but I can't be sure. Anyone here have any experience with this or heard about anything like this? I hope it doesn't seem like I'm trolling. I really do have a genuine interest in this. I just wanted to share my experience with the community. Thanks for reading. I was deep out at sea on an Alaskan commercial fishing trip. I had been going out for years at that point, and it was, in some ways, the last frontier for me. It was the one place that I could still find complete solitude. The one place that I could just go be by myself. I didn't have to explain myself to anybody. I could just be by myself and I was so far removed from the rest of the world, I felt like I was on my own planet. In a strange way, it was freeing and I was able to do some of my best thinking out there. The further I got from the rest of the world, the less I felt like I was truly a part of it. But, on this particular trip, things were different. Something was just off, and it was making me feel like I was on edge all the time. The other guys on the boat were fine, but I didn't know them very well. They were all nice, but they all seemed to be a little strange at times. I can never put my finger on exactly what it was. I felt like I was in danger sometimes. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with what we all saw on this trip, but it does make you wonder. This was not my first real fishing trip, and I had been out at sea more times than not. I could have imagined what we had saw that day was this disturbing. It all started with an unusually large catch. We had caught a lot of fish and the trip was shaping up to be a very good one. We had a good amount of fish on board already, and we were pretty excited about the haul. 
The sky was clear, and the weather was fantastic. The fish were biting, and we were all getting along. We were going to be making some good money. It looked like everything was going to be just fine. So, we're there pushing through the water, about an hour away from harbor, when something of a very large size begins to swim by the boat. One of the men on board starts screaming and pointing. We all go rushing towards the port side, and all of our jaws dropped simultaneously. You could just see this incredibly large mass swimming just below the surface. It was very long and very wide. Its head was just barely coming out of the water, and it was swimming at a very high speed. We could see its flippers even moving very quickly underneath, at least the shape of them. They were much larger than the flippers of a whale. I can't over-exaggerate how large this thing was. I mean, it had to be easily over 100 feet in length. Easily. We all just kept looking at each other, looking back at this thing in complete disbelief. We had never seen anything like this in our lives, let alone our fishing careers. We were just in complete shock. The boat, though, was still moving, and we did not want to lose sight of it. We were all scrambling to get our cameras, and get them ready to take pictures, or whatever. Then, this thing sticks its entire head out of the water, and this is when the story gets a little understandably crazy. What we saw, I can't explain in words what this thing was. It was maybe a deep blue color, more dark gray than blue though, I believe, and stared at all of us for maybe five seconds before submerging and diving down into the water and vanishing. A couple of other details that really stuck out to me was that it was covered with some sort of strange-looking scales that I had never seen before. There were dark blotches all over its body and head. Some of them were large. I mean, we were all in shock seeing this. But we knew what we had saw, and it was really hard for us to accept that we actually all saw something like this. None of us had our camera out like we should have because it was just shocking to see something so magnificent. It is certainly the largest sea serpent I have ever witnessed in my life. We were all just in awe. None of us could believe it. I'm telling you, if sea monsters do exist, I had just seen one. If Leviathan does exist, that was it. It was easily the most incredible thing that I have ever seen in my life. I was so overwhelmed that I could not even think. I was dumbfounded. It was an experience that I will never forget for the rest of my life. And you know, I've heard many tales too growing up, being a rookie fisherman, about things like that fishermen had seen out in the waters. You hear it all from ghosts to ghost ships, even UFOs. I had just never imagined that I would bear witness to a colossal-sized sea animal. I was shocked, and I didn't want to tell anybody about it, until... I could at least fully process everything. When you're in shock, I mean, I was witnessing the biggest thing I'd ever seen in my life. I couldn't even think about what to say. So when we got back to the shore, none of us really said anything about it to anybody. I mean, what do you say? What do you say to somebody when you tell them that you saw a 100 plus foot sea serpent swimming around in the ocean? They would probably think you're crazy. So we just kept it to ourselves, and we all went on with our lives. I don't know if I'll ever forget what that creature was, but I will say that it was an incredible experience to behold. I have never seen anything like it before. I can understand why it's so hard to comprehend that something like this actually exists, but it does. I hope you have a wonderful day, and thanks for hearing an old man like me tell his sea tale. I'm not sure if I will ever see something like that again in my life. If I do, I'll let you know. Let me tell you about something that happened to me just a few years ago when I was walking along the pier in North Carolina, just along the coast in a small fishing town. 
I won't name the town, but if you look on a map, it shouldn't be too hard to guess. I'm a huge fan of night fishing, and so these events would occur during the night. Now, I can't say for certain what I encountered was an octopus, but actually something else entirely. It's left me frightened and apprehensive about fishing again at night. Yes, it scared me that badly. Anyway, here it goes. I walked along the pier and looked out at the ocean at night. The sky was an inky black with just a few stars peeking through. A beautiful night sky and scenery. As I'm getting ready to cast my line into the water below, the only real light source being from the moon illuminating the waters, I could just so faintly see the silhouette of what appeared to be a large octopus rising out of the water. At least, I thought it was an octopus at first, but I stand by that it was not. I pulled out my fishing rod, at least pulled it away, and the water became still. I couldn't see the creature anymore. I turned around to see where this thing went, and I see these tentacles slowly sliding the pier with a large fish in its grasp. Now I back up, and these tentacles slide back down. Then, what appeared to be a tentacle-like appendage shoots out of the water, grabs onto my leg, and pulls me down into the black water, and grabs a hold of my chest. And then, what I thought at the time, wrapped its tentacles around me and began to constrict. I felt my ribcage starting to crack, and this thing was now only tightening its grip. I mustered my last bit of strength and pulled a knife out from my pocket, stabbing this thing in what I thought was the eye. The way that had its tentacles positioned around my body, I was fortunate that I had the free room to grab a knife and stab this thing as hard as I could. It immediately released me, and I was able to successfully swim to the surface as fast as I could. I could see that I was no more than 10 feet below the water's surface, so I'm going as fast as I can to swim back toward shore, no more than 30 feet, and I could feel this tentacle thing trying to grab onto my heel to pull me back under. With enough kicking and resisting, I'm able to break free and make it back. Screaming for help wasn't going to get me anywhere. There's no one around. I was out here all alone. I did my best to make it back up to the shoreline, and I could see these things in the water squirming behind me, and saw that it did not quite look like an octopus, at least not like one I had ever seen. Then, I realized that it never had itself wrapped around me like I thought, but only one large tentacle, and what I thought I was stabbing, it was actually just that one tentacle. This was pretty scary. I told this story to a friend of mine who is a lighthouse keeper, and he's pretty much a salty sea dog. He said that creatures like this are usually docile, and that they usually don't attack you unless you threaten them. I explained it to him, though, and he said it's not like an octopus to behave like that, but even he's still unsure. He also said that I must have done something to provoke it. He said that they normally don't attack unless you get too close to them. I'm not really sure what to make of the whole thing myself, if we're honest. It's just one strange occurrence. I'll try and make this as detailed as possible, but also not go overboard. So, I go back to the early 80s when I was 12 years old. I grew up in a small town in the Midwest, and I remember... But one time, my family and I were fishing on a small river. It was myself, my father, my mother, and my two sisters. When the sun began to set, we then decided to leave and go back to our car. Walking along the shore, we made our way back, and as we're walking back on the shore, my father notices, and he says, What's that thing? We all looked up, and we saw it. This large, amphibian-like creature... This thing looked to be about 12 feet long, and it was huge. We all ran for our lives back to the car, with my sisters and mother screaming. It kind of resembled a frog and a fish, 
I don't even know how to begin to describe it, but it climbed up and out of the river, and even tried to come after us. It was scary, to say the least. I remember that it had these strange webbed hands, too. It was a very strange-looking animal. We made it back to the car just in time, as this thing appeared to be staggering around the shoreline of the river. It was very frightening. Look, I've never really told anyone about this besides my wife. I don't know if it was a mutant or what, but it's something I'll never forget. And for a long time afterwards, it really deterred my interest in fishing. I used to practice diving and swimming in the open ocean a lot when I was much younger, in my 20s. Not so much anymore. To conquer my fear of being out in the open water and to help develop buoyancy, balance, and swimming endurance, I was training to go deep diving for my career, so it was well worth the training. I would go out with a team of five other guys, and we would just practice in the open ocean. One time, I was swimming in the ocean, practicing diving, actually, when, out of the corner of my eye, I see this dark humanoid shape that almost kind of jumps up on me and sinks these sharp little teeth into my back. Oh man, it hurt. I'm underwater, so I try not to scream in panic, but this thing or person has a hold of me. I only faintly saw the shape of it as it swam towards me while in the water. Suddenly, it started pulling me down deeper, and I came up to the surface and noticed that what was holding me down was this human-like thing with a torso and arms, but instead of legs, it appeared to have like a fish-like tail, and kind of like a mermaid, but it did not look like a fantasy mermaid. I just had a small glimpse of it because it swam so fast and grabbed at me, but thankfully, I was able to get away. It turns out, one of our team guys, Jonathan, was able to help me and save me. He was just swimming nearby and saw me being dragged down by this thing and attacked me, and so he attacked it. He pulled me up to the surface and helped me get away. When we're all diving in the ocean, we're generally no far apart than maybe, what, 30 to 50 yards, so that's why he was able to see. I had a panic attack and had to be pulled back to the boat by Jonathan. He's also a lifeguard, and he saved my life from drowning had this thing held on to me any longer than it had. I was so grateful to him that I offered him a drink at the bar for saving my life. Listen, I know it's probably not much, and I know it's probably not much of a story, but I was nearly drowned and killed by some mermaid creature. I had to have my back bandaged up too because the bite was bad. It looked like a large fish bit into me because it released blood into the water, which we would find out as I'm getting bandaged up on boat. Since I was bleeding so badly, everybody had to get back up onto the boat to keep from attracting sharks. This story is true and I swear to my life, I will never forget that day I was in the water. I'm not going to reveal my name because I like to travel and I don't want to be found. I don't want to be known to the world. Jonathan had supposedly had other encounters with the same mermaid-type creatures before. He said that he's seen a group of them, these same creatures, mermaids, I guess, that live in the open waters right around Mexico in the Gulf. They sometimes come to shore and go into the water, and they like to attack humans. He said he knows that I was lucky to be alive. Their bites are deadly, poisonous, although... I don't recall ever being poisoned, though. His encounter with these things was a little different. He was swimming in the ocean when he was suddenly attacked. These things bit into his leg and even tore it open. He had to get stitches and claimed it was very, very painful. After my encounter, I believe that mermaids do exist. Maybe not in the traditional sense where Disney and fantasy make them out to be these cutesy things, but they are some type of humanoid fish creature that do attack. I can't deny that. I have scars on my back to prove it. In addition, 
There have been reports of Bigfoot sightings in a nearby area on land. Even on the TV show, Destination Truth, Josh Gates and the team investigated a Bigfoot sighting in a swamp. The witness also claimed that a small creature attacked her while she was snorkeling. Any connections there? So, I guess it would not be the first time that people are hearing about these strange creatures in the water, eh? Listen, I'm going to share with you a major traumatic event that happened in my life, where I was convinced I died, but somehow I did not. I was near the brink of death, with how badly I was clawed up and torn. Why my life was spared, I'll never know. One day, when I was just a teenager, I was paddling out in the ocean in Southern California, not too far off from the shore. I was paddling out to the waves on my surfboard when I saw something big swimming in the water. I thought it was maybe a sea lion, but as I got closer, I feared it was a shark. But then I realized it was strange looking and nowhere near either a shark or a sea lion. In fear, I tried to swim away, but it got close to me and it reached out with this strange hand and grabbed hold of me and it had claws. So now I'm holding onto my board, screaming in terror, and this thing opened its mouth to try and bite me, and I could see shark-like razor teeth. I closed my eyes and tried to escape the grasp of this thing, but it had me tightly and was pulling me down in the water. I could see my own reflection in its black, soulless eyes. I accepted I was dead. After accepting that, I let go. I felt myself fall off the board and... This thing pulled me under, and for some reason, I lost complete consciousness. I was convinced I was dead. Then, the next thing I know, I come to, and a lifeguard is giving me CPR on the beach, with tons of people standing around. I had deep, bloody gash marks all up and down my body, with this strange purple ooze coming out of them. My mother was scared, crapless, and crying. I mean... I was a bloody mess. I was taken immediately to the hospital, and they had to sew up all my wounds. It took them days to clean me up. I was told that the police had found my surfboard in the water, and I guess it had a huge bite mark in it. The police claimed that it could have been a shark, but they weren't sure, but that a shark was most likely. They also said that two other kids were attacked by a similar creature in the same area. The kids were also, like me, lucky to survive. I was in the hospital for a few more days after that, followed by many surgeries to kind of help stitch me back together. There were some torn ligaments in me. I never did go back into the water for quite a while after. It was bad enough that, like I said, I had to get surgery. I was scared that I was going to die. The whole thing left me traumatized. I had nightmares about it for weeks afterwards. I never told anybody about what really happened to me in the water. I was always too afraid to talk about it. I never had anybody to tell. So I told my mother that I was attacked by a shark, but I never told her the truth about what had happened. I tried to put the whole thing out of my mind, but it was hard. I would have nightmares. I did not even want to look at the ocean. I had a hard time dealing with what happened. So. I started to see a therapist to help me deal with what had happened, and it took a long time for me to get over it. Eventually, I would start surfing again, but I did not go back to the beach where it happened. I had a hard time dealing with that trauma. I think it really affected me mentally. I tried to go back to school and get on with my life, but even then, I was having a rough time concentrating. I would have day nightmares about it, Waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. I didn't know how to deal with that pain of the attack. I grew up a bit more, went off to college, and got my degree in business. I have a great job now in life, but I still live with those memories of the attack. Of that demon thing that attacked me in the water. It's hard to forget what happened. But I know I eventually will. You know... You're probably the first actual person I've ever sat down and 
opened up to about this traumatic event in full truth. I'm thankful for that. I'm going to get over it. I'm going to get back to the ocean. I'm just going to have to deal with it. I know I can. I'm going to fight through the pain and make myself deal with it. Thank you. I have an interesting sea tale for you that I'm sure you'll probably find interesting, if anything at least. This occurred back in Spain in the early 1900s with a very poor fisherman. This man, whom we'll call John, was fishing in the ocean when he was attacked by a large sea creature. It had come out of the water and leapt onto the boat to eat him, but the fisherman and his catch who he had been fishing for hours, was in a state of exhaustion, and he somehow managed to escape. The creature did not follow him, and he was actually rescued by a passing boat, and made his way back to the village where he had lived. He told the whole story to the villagers, who had never believed in sea monsters, and they laughed at him. John, who was on the verge of losing his livelihood, was ridiculed for his story. But... When the story made its way to the village leader, he ordered a search for the creature, and even offered a reward. When the search party returned, they reported that they had found the creature. But when the leader's best hunter approached the creature, the creature attacked. The hunter was killed, and the rest of the party was forced to retreat. This creature was never found again after that, and John was released. I find this story very interesting to note, because of the details about it, and how John goes in to describe the detail. He described it as being a large fish creature, and also having very large thins and sharp spines. He said the very sight of it alone was terrifying and primordial. It scared him. And this is one of the reasons I believe it is real, because the story is very detailed, and John, who I'm just using as a name because... The fisherman in the story was actually never given a name. He is speaking from experience. John had seen this strange, mysterious creature. This was right off the coast of Portugal, where he was fishing. There's actually another written record I've seen maybe about 30 years before this, around 1860 to 1870, where yet another fisherman describes an almost similar sighting of a creature that he too saw while fishing. While similar in description, this fisherman saw a creature that he described as being very elongated in the head and looked like some sort of strange ancient crocodile, but much, much larger. He described it as being so large that it nearly capsized his small fishing boat, and it swam underneath it. It swam close enough to the surface, though, that he got a good enough view of it, and although it never surfaced, he saw more of it than what he would have liked to. These kinds of things really make you question and wonder. What's really out there in the ocean that we don't know about? It seems like every day, more and more, we're hearing about things like cryptids and strange beings being caught on camera. The sea is already so vast and mysterious as it is. We aren't even aware of half the creatures living in it. And yet... As a collective species, we are so quick to dismiss anything we deem as outlandish, like the megalodon is in fact extinct, or that mermaids don't exist. The sightings that I continue to read, that are well documented from back years and years ago, really make me question just where we are at in our modern day scientific approach to proving the existence of things. I find it very interesting that so many of these sighting stories are so similar. They all describe a very large fish with sharp spikes and elongated heads. There's a very interesting thing to note too, because you would think that if these are different people, maybe not all of them would describe the creature in the same way. I find it interesting that they all do in fact describe it in the same way. All of these sightings also include the creature showing some sort of passive behavior, some aggressive, but there is yet another story, and this one has always stuck out to me as of recently. It was told by a man that was not only attacked by this strange creature, but he was also nearly eaten. The man, we'll call James, another unnamed sailor. 
This was a man who was attacked by a sea monster while on a ship off the coast of South Africa. The creature had suddenly emerged from the water, jumping onto the small fishing ship. It attacked James and proceeded to actually eat several of the other crew members. The creature ended up destroying the small fishing boat, sinking it, causing James to be stranded by sea. The interesting part here about this particular story is that James did survive the encounter, but only to tell the tale. He was missing for three days until he was found in the ocean, floating on a plank of wood. He had been severely injured, bleeding, miraculously not attacked by sharks, and was clinging on to life. When he was found, he was rescued and rushed to a nearby hospital and treated for his injuries. He was barely alive and just made it. He had described what had happened, and of course, nobody believed him. When I read this story a few years ago, I was in shock. I was shocked that the man had survived, but I was also shocked that the doctors did not believe him. They actually laughed at him while they were treating him. I find that to be so shocking because if he was a fictional character, they would believe him in a heartbeat. But because this was a real person, they just write him off as being crazy. But... The thing that I find the most interesting is that the ship had sunk. That means that whatever attacked it had to have been some sort of extremely powerful creature. Maybe even a creature that can go above water for long periods of time that inhabits the ocean. But why would a creature like that attack a fishing boat? I don't know. I'm not a marine biologist. I'm just a curious person that has a very deep interest in anything that is unknown. I would be terrified if I was in the ocean and I encountered a creature like this. I would be so shocked and I would probably freeze. And to this day, we still don't know what the creature was or why it attacked the fishing boat. There are just too many things we will never fully understand about the deep blue.